what do you think a Latina looks like? Many people see someone like her, or even her. That's just one of the reasons why so many black and indigenous millennials of Latin American descent are moving away from the term and canceling Latinidad. Today's baggage, the anti-blackness of Latinidad. Latinos are having a moment, but while Latinidad is all over mainstream media, more and more people are calling out the blatant whiteness of it all. Latinidad is a term used to acknowledge and link the collective experiences and cultures of people from Latin America. That song was my jam. It derived from the word Latino, which was first seen in California newspapers in the 1850s. Forget what you heard, the words Latino and Hispanic are completely different. According to scholars, Hispanic links Latin Americans to Spain, its cultures and traditions, with an emphasis on the language. So folks who are actually from Spain would be considered Hispanic. But this wouldn't be the case for Brazilians, for example, because they speak Portuguese. On the other hand, the term Latinx refers to people from countries south of the United States. Latinx people share the experience of being colonized. Colonizers are not included in Latinidad. Don't scare me like that, colonizer. And while for some, the term Latinidad is associated with pride, mainly white Latinx folks. For others, it's become associated with oppression. To understand why some millennials in the U.S. are rejecting the term, you gotta understand the history. Let's take it back a couple of centuries to what's now known as Latin America. Now, we done told y'all about the transatlantic slave trade some 511 times on this series, but stick with me. During the slave trade, over 10 and a half million enslaved people arrived in the Americas, and slave ships made multiple stops before arriving upon these North American shores. In fact, over 90% of the enslaved were dropped off in the Caribbean and South America. And even after emancipation in the various Latin American countries, the treatment of black people in those spaces was no better. Tanya Hernandez is the author of Multiracials and Civil Rights and a professor at Fordham Law. She's a black Boricua who's done extensive work on racial discrimination and subordination in Latin America, so I had to track her down. Within Latin America, we have a long history of anti-blackness. We had many more people of African ancestry. And so that history of um, enforced slavery has a very long legacy uh, within Latin America. And it's said that outside of Nigeria, in Brazil, um, is thought to be the a location with the highest percentage of people of African descent. Given that density of people of African ancestry, at coexisting at the same time with their lack of social mobility. What you instead see is a uh, social hierarchy that is a racial caste system. And, and Latin Americans would say, oh, well, it's a class issue. But when a class issue is so completely coalescing with a pigmentocracy, then it's hard to say it's only about class. And when I refer to this term of pigmentocracy, what I'm referring to are the ways in which there is a social hierarchy that is arrayed from light to dark, with light being places with the most economic success, the most at greatest access to socioeconomic opportunity, and darker spheres with less. And the only sort of additional nuance in that is that you could have light skin, but if you have African features or African hair texture, then that low is your currency. Given this obsession with whiteness, it's no surprise that throughout Latin America, there were government-led efforts to make countries majority white. In Brazil, it was called branqueamento, and in many parts of Latin America, blanqueamento. The term literally means whitening. But what is fascinating to note is that after the emancipation of, of slavery, what you instead see is a turn to the use of immigration law to diminish the access and the mobility of recently emancipated slaves. Argentina and in Brazil in particular, where they had the funding for this, they sort of opened the doors to European immigration. In Argentina, the population doubles after the emancipation of slavery because of the open door policy for European immigration. Beyond bringing Europeans into Latin American countries to literally lighten the race, Hernandez also said that there were restrictions on the lives of people of African ancestry, like the types of jobs black people could work, the Afro-spiritual religions that they practiced, and even the quality of their education. 
So, Latin America, y'all think that you're not guilty of institutionalized racism led by the hand of law? As Hernandez points out, the state and law played a huge role in Latin America's anti-blackness some time ago. But the racist ideologies and aspirations of whiteness, though more subtle, still exist even in the United States. What do you think? Generations of racist conditioning are just gonna magically disappear? Like when you walk into a Dominican hair salon and have stylists refer to your hair as pelo malo, which translates to bad hair. I mean, this is what Latinidad looks like, according to mainstream media. With BS like this, no wonder black and indigenous millennials of Latin American descent are calling for Latinidad to be canceled. Bye. Hashtag Latinidad is canceled is a social media movement all about reclaiming identity. Afro-indigenous poet and cultural worker Alan Lopez helped popularize the cancel party. And many prominent voices like journalist and founder of the blog, Ana Latina, Janelle Martinez, are also moving away from Latinidad. How do you choose to identify yourself? I personally choose to identify as a black woman first and foremost. I also, given my family lineage being Garifuna, I will use that as well. I do go by Afro-Latina, but in recent years, my sentiments have sort of shifted a bit from using the term um, because I feel it's important to center my blackness. This thought comes from a recent piece I wrote, Ore Mezcla, when discussing Latinidad, who is included and yes, who isn't. Yes, we saw that piece, honey. So the thing about Latinidad, right, um, as noted in the piece, is it definitely serves a very narrow audience. It doesn't necessarily idea us around nationalities, um, our racial and uh, gender identities, our status. And for me, um, Latinidad ultimately serves white, cisgendered, straight, wealthy men, right? And I am <laughs> none of those. I'm at the margins of this term. What gaps exist within Latinidad? Talking about 33 Latin American and Caribbean nations, um, Haiti doesn't get included in the conversation and being Garifuna even, right? Like my culture's native tongue is not even Spanish, it's Garifuna. Oftentimes when people speak to this sort of, again, monolithic unified uh, term to encapsulate all these identities, there's a lot of holes in that. Can you speak to um, some specific ways that we've seen this anti-blackness in pop culture? I think Spanish language media has very blatant issues. You can still on occasion see blackface, people in Espanol, they always come out with their 50 most beautiful people issue. This year they had Yalitza, Aparicio, who is um, the amazing indigenous actress. Last year they had Amara La Negra. In past years, of course, they have like Zoe Saldana, amongst others. But to also send out that intentional message that there can only be one at a time, or when we do feature someone, um, primarily a black or indigenous woman, we're going to lighten her, we're going to place her in frumpy, attire while everyone else is dressed very appealing, really sends a strong message not only to um, the consumers of the magazine, but this next generation. And the message is that you're an afterthought, if even considered at all. With all the baggage that comes with the term, Latinidad, girl, you in danger. Hernandez says the issue is that Latinidad tries to create a uniformity, but this doesn't exist. There is not necessarily this happy, uh, race free, a dynamic within Latinidad. Essentially, this homogeneity is a lie. Correct. If we want to have a liberation politics, all of us have to be part of the liberation politics. And that means also being attuned to the ways in which we create our own hierarchies and need to unpack them and work against them as well. Self identification is personal and somewhat fluid. While I could trace my paternal lineage to Cuba by way of Africa, when I'm in some white Latinx spaces, I'm not welcome. Ultimately, when it comes down to me and embracing this so-called inclusive notion of Latinidad that rejects blackness and indigeneity, I'm good. Let there be no ambiguity. I'm black. Blackity, black, black, black. Y'all can keep that.